After unexpectedly starting 6-0, undefeated, and ranked in the top 10, off to what some would call a very hot start and what I would call a somewhat hot start, my Michigan Wolverines are now entering their bye week, where they will focus on practicing and preparing for the upcoming six teams that are left on their schedule that are in order as follows. Northwestern, Michigan State, Indiana, Penn State, Maryland, and Ohio State. And this team is an interesting team. I think it is interesting how we are at this point. I did not expect us to be here with, you know, how the big how I thought the Big 10 would pan out, but things have obviously changed. The season is crazy. So here I am and I am going to give my analysis and two cents on this Michigan team right at the midpoint of the season. I also made a similar video about Ohio State, and if you want to check that one out, I will link that down below in the description. If you have not visited this channel before, consider giving it a subscribe and a like. Join this awesome community. We just recently passed 1,500 subscribers, and we are ever so growing. And comment your thoughts down below after you watch this video, and tell me what you think about the Michigan Wolverines and where they are at the middle of the season. So let's get right into it. Michigan is this team that, that really intrigues me. And I am a Michigan fan myself, so you may be thinking, well, of course it intrigues you. Because Michigan fans, one common joke that I hear at least in my household, amongst friends, online, we're so full of ourselves. And this team is anything but full of themselves. This team is humble. They take their opponents seriously which is something that Michigan teams have very much struggled with in the past, is arrogance. I don't really see arrogance in this team. I see this team having a chip on its shoulder, and it that is what impresses me. It's like we truly did get somewhat of a culture change in the locker room, which was much needed after last year. But that's just one thing. Another thing about Michigan that I also find interesting is the offense. The offensive line, you know, despite in the preseason and last year being one of our greatest weaknesses, has turned into one of our greatest strengths. That that right there interests me and excites me as a Michigan fan. And there may be some, you know, this team has had some bumpy games you know, against Rutgers in the second half. Nebraska was a bumpy game. But we have earned the 6-0 and record that we have had. And the defense, for the most part, outside of maybe some games when it comes to passing defense, the defense has played well. I would say certainly at the time of this recording, which is, you know, after midnight on Friday. It's currently 1.46 a.m., October 16th, Saturday, we look a lot better than Oregon, a lot better than Clemson, and a lot better than anyone playing tonight. I mean, Oregon's a top 10 team by rankings. They're struggling around with Cal and Syracuse and Clemson were in a dogfight. Michigan is way better than Clemson and Oregon. And I would have never expected to hear that if I was to be honest with you preseason I thought this team would be an 8 and 4 team that would mightily and I mean mightily struggle on offense and have a bend but not break defense which is a point that we'll talk about in the next few minutes but this team has exceeded what my predictions were they have not however exceeded my expectations so I have a group of facts here that I think supports my analysis, which I would call, I called Ohio State an A-plus rating. I would call Michigan probably an A-minus to A grade for the midseason. So the first fact 
is Michigan is ninth nationally in by points allowed per game. That right there, to me, is crazy. And I understand. Like I, I did expect in the preseason that this defense would be good it, to a certain degree. But this team is not even top 10 in rush yards allowed per game and passing yards allowed per game. We allow, we're, I mean, we're, this just shows we're a bend but not break team. 15 and a half points allowed per game on average. The offense scores just over 38 points a game on average. This is just something else. And I am impressed by this. I'm impressed by Aiden Hutchinson on the defense, who leads the team in sacks with four and a half. And I'm a, I'm really impressed with David Ojabo, too, who also has four and a half sacks and 16 total tackles. And he has two forced fumbles and a fumble recovery. Amazing for a linebacker. Taylor Upshaw and Christopher Hinton also have a uh, one and a half sacks and one sack respectively. Hinton has two passes defended and a fumble recovery that he recovered against Wisconsin. The defensive line and linebackers, Michigan's front seven is just playing amazingly this year. We get pressure, we stop the run, we re- force fumbles, recover fumbles, get sacks. It's all good. But what makes this even more surprising, you know, the bend but not break defense, is the secondary. The secondary, which is led by Dax Hill, you also got Brad Hawkins, Jamon Green, Vincent Gray. It is certainly not the the best group. Daxton Hill's a talent, four passes defended, two interceptions, and half a sack, and 29 total tackles. And you know, also Brad Hawkins with four passes defended, 20 total tackles. RJ Moten has 21 total tackles. Jamon Green is a pick, and Vincent Gray has four passes defended. The defensive backs and the secondary have really stepped it up from last year, but this is still somewhat of a weakness for us, is defending the pass. And I am surprised after looking at that, you know, looking at that Nebraska game. I'm kind of shocked that Western Michigan didn't score a little bit more points on us, but maybe that's just how big our home field advantage is. This team, honestly, I'm really impressed with the defense, despite the fact that I did in the preseason expect them to be great. What's even better is, despite these issues with the pass defense, Michigan is first in the East Division in allowed pass yards a game. That really shocked me, especially with the fact that we only have three total interceptions, only 25 passes defended. We've had several blown covers, and these aren't knacks at the team. This team has played very efficient football. I think according to ESPN's FPI, we're, I don't even know how efficient on defense. We're, I think, top, maybe top 20 on Defense efficiency may be higher. I haven't checked in a while. But being first in the Big Ten East in a lot of pass yards to me is crazy. You have, for a lot of passing yards a game, you got Purdue, Wisconsin, and Iowa, three West teams in a row. Then you got Michigan, who allows 190.7 pass yards a game. Right after that, you got Penn State, and then after that, you got Nebraska. So even though this is, again, just a stat, and as I might have said once in the Ohio State video or not, but I always like to say this if I can, stats don't mean everything. But it is still impressive despite some of the blown coverages and other things. This defense is still pretty locked down in the secondary when it needs to be. Look at the Nebraska game. When it matters, we hold Martinez to a three and out. And look at Western Michigan. They have a good QB. We still shut down their pass game to a great degree. When teams get in the red zone against us, for the most part, we do hold them to field goals a great amount of the time. It's just 
impressive, honestly, to me. And the third one is this team has an impressive bend but not break element. And I talked about this earlier, but it's again with, you know, the points being first in the East Division allowed pass yards a game despite blowing some coverages. This team is not afraid to let you in their own territory because they are confident in knowing they can pounce on you and that they can capitalize off of your mistakes. This team also, which I think this involves but the bend but not break, they're very disciplined. They will bend back. They will not commit too many penalties. They won't get any offsides on offense. They won't get many false starts. You get the whole point. Not a lot of pass interference calls. This team is disciplined. Absolutely. Period. Amen. They don't make many penalties. They don't make many mistakes. And another part of the bend but not break element is for every team you adapt. And this defense adapts, unlike Don Brown. Don Brown is getting raided by Ohio State through the air in 2018, doesn't make adjustments in the second half. Mike McDonald, there are some issues. He makes adjustments. He might bend, but he never lets his defense break and this entire team too it's down on the road against nebraska it comes back and wins so that's the mainly the defense some of the team as well but another thing i do want to bring up another topic is the offense does have a high ceiling it needs to improve in my opinion but the ceiling is high you have at quarterback you have Cade mcnamara and you have J.J. McCarthy. J.J. McCarthy is something else. He is the quarterback of the future, and I have actually come to the conclusion that I think he should start, and this is a part of the high ceiling but needs to improve. Cade has done, honestly, he has done pretty well for what I thought he was going to be. I thought he was going to be worse than this. And don't get me wrong, he's not amazing. Wouldn't even say he's great, but he is above average for what I expect for a Michigan QB under Harbaugh. Like, I was expecting 2017 Brandon Peters, John O'Corn. I was expecting something that bad combined with the O-line to be bad and that our running backs would still be decent because of their talent but they wouldn't be able to fully utilize it because of the bad O-line. Well, I could have never been more incorrect. This O-line is amazing. The running backs? Heck, it's not even, you know, three-fourths of the way in the season, and I'm already so tempted to declare this running back room elite. Blake Corum, 610 rushing yards, only 97 attempts, Rushes for an average of 6.3 yards a carry with eight touchdowns. Hassan Haskins, 492 rushing yards, 4.9 yards average, also eight touchdowns. 21 total rushing touchdowns on the ground. J.J. McCarthy and Cade McNamara each also have one. McCarthy has thrown for 178 yards, Cade for 986 Cade has thrown for five touchdowns, one interception, has a 142.3 QB rating. McCarthy has thrown for two touchdowns, no picks. Both have one sack. McCarthy has a 218.2 QB rating. And granted, a lot of those are in what we would call garbage time, so it would be a little different to see him, McCarthy, in, you know, starting full-time at the position, but Northwestern would be an interesting game, and I think almost the perfect time to make the switch. If you're going to make the switch now, Northwestern's not a threat. They don't have a defense. Play them out and see what happens, and if it doesn't work, Cade is solid enough and has the leadership qualities to certainly lead his team back. Again, these are just my opinions. I am a fan who is speaking his mind I do not know who is the better quarterback 100% because I am not the coach and I am not involved 
with the players or directly involved with the football team. But this offense is a very high ceiling. I constantly saw guys, you know, wide receivers such as Cornelius Johnson, Dalen Baldwin. We saw Roman Wilson in the Wisconsin game. These guys can get behind secondaries. They just need a guy to throw it to him accurately in stride. And unfortunately, I don't think Cade is the guy for that. And finally, I already kind of mentioned this, but Mike Hart and the running backs are causing havoc on the ground. And I know the Rutgers half, and people are going to continuously bring that up. It's an error. It's an error half. Rutgers' defense is worse than, I'd say, Nebraska's defense, worse than Wisconsin's defense. And we definitely ran better against those two teams. Statistically, we totally ran better against Nebraska. And for how good Wisconsin's defense is, and the fact we ran pretty similarly against Wisconsin and Rutgers, we ran better against Wisconsin. These running backs are great, and I can already tell that Mike Hart is just an amazing running backs coach. A little more side notes before I end this analysis is also Josh Gaddis's play calling. It's not amazing or anything, but it is definitely improved from the previous two years. I mean, the offense is just flowing a lot better in every way. He's Gaddis is adapting to how this team is functioning, getting in a lot of different runs, calling the correct plays, You know, that flea flicker was good against Wisconsin. And, you know, constantly like having guys trying to throw deep as well. I like the aspects of the vertical passing attack that we do have as well. Same thing with adaptation on the defense. I like how the staff works and I really appreciate it. And finally, just to get to the schedule a little bit, I think that this team my Michigan Wolverines will go uh, 10 and 2. 10 and 2 to me at the moment does sound more proper. I think Northwestern we beat, Michigan State we beat, Indiana we beat. Penn State, it looks like Clifford is going to be in full swing by the time we visit them. And I don't think that with how we are currently, I could be wrong. Michigan State will be a huge test. I don't think we will beat this Penn State game on the road. We'll beat Maryland, and then we'll lose to Ohio State. We have a far better chance, and this is scary for some of you, of going into a whiteout and beating Penn State than we do this Ohio State team with how we operate. Ohio State's hefty passing attack and still deadly rushing attack, match up very well against our defense compared to Penn State's one-dimensional offense, which, without Clifford, is not even an offense. It's just a conglomerate of men. But that's how I think the schedule pans out, which means a 10-2 record, and we would be tied second with Penn State, so technically be third. This team looks to be very good, and they honestly do have the potential to go 12 and 0 or 11 and 1, whichever one you think. But I don't think, with how we are currently, that we will reach that point. That's all I have to say for today. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and comment your thoughts down below. Again, like, subscribe already mentioned this before, join this awesome community. What did you like about this video? And what did you not like? Tell me below. I'm always looking for feedback. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you around.